Welcome to Perry's Theory of Intellectual and Ethical Development, a digital primer by Mike Green, Hannah Pinn, and Melissa Lopez. We're going to take you through the history, methodology, limitations, and contemporary practice of Perry's Theory. Perry says, forms of intellectual and ethical development are the structures that shape how people view their experience. Perry conducted research in the 1950s and 1960s using men from Harvard and women from Radcliffe. However, Perry only used the interviews of the men to validate his theory. The methodology of Perry can be simplified down into four positions, dualism, multiplicity, relativism, and commitment. We're going to describe the nine positions that are within these four in more detail. Position one is basic duality. An example of this position is students view teachers as having all the authority and all of the knowledge. The next position is multiplicity. Position two, multiplicity prelegitimate is when students begin to recognize multiple authorities who may present different knowledge. Position 3, multiplicity subordinate, is when authorities like Eric Alexander are searching for knowledge about different Bigfoot sightings. Position number 4, multiplicity correlate relativism subordinate, is when 11-year-old Burke Bayer gave a TED talk about where our food comes from. The next position is relativism. Position 5 is relativism correlate competing or diffuse. An example of this is a student trying to decide if going to college is the right decision or the wrong decision for them. Position 6 is commitment foreseen. An example of this is college students selecting which college to attend. The most mature position is commitment. Position number seven, initial commitment, consists of a bungee jumper getting strapped into a harness and realizing what they are about to do. Position eight, orientation and implications of commitment, is an example of a bungee jumper standing on a ledge and deciding to jump or not to jump. Position 9, developing commitments, consists of the bungee jumper jumping off of the bridge and being fully committed. Along the bottom of this illustration, there's a blue line that indicates the maturation of students evolving through these nine positions. However, there are three deflections. An example of retreat is Bubble Girl, who was confused by the bubbles and retreated away from them. The second deflection is escape. An example of escape is when Ferris Bueller was burnt out from school and responsibilities, so skipped school, stole a Ferrari, and sang in a parade. The third is temporizing. An example of this is CSSA students who know they have to job hunt in a year but are taking pause to consider when and where to apply. One criticism or limitation of Perry is from women's way of knowing. When the woman's mode is treated as deficit, women come to believe that they cannot think and learn as well as men. This critique can also be applied to other identities. When the LGBTQ mode is treated as deficit, LGBTQ come to believe that they cannot think and learn as well as white privileged Harvard men. We need more than old white guys creating these theories. Now we'll explore how the methodology of Perry's theory as well as the limitations apply to contemporary practice. Perry's theory has been used in informal assessment, developmental instruction, classroom applications, and student affairs applications. Cool new student affairs professionals use Perry to understand theoretical foundations of student knowing and integrate parts of the theory into our practice as we see fit. <laughs>